Hello, AP physics students. I've had a few questions about some challenge problems from the positive physics website in unit eight on angled forces. So I'm gonna show you how to solve a couple of them or at least get you started on a couple of them so you can think through the process and hopefully it'll make more sense after you've had a little explanation. So here is the first question I've had questions or the first problem I've had questions about. It says a student is making an accelerometer by hanging a pendulum in a car. She wants to determine the acceleration A of the car based on the angle theta the pendulum makes with the vertical. The pendulum has a bob of mass M. Assume the windows are rolled up. So we're ignoring air resistance. Let me just move this out of the way. All right, so to set this problem up, we really need to think about the forces that are at play here. So uh, we've got the, the weight force of the bob, which would be M times G. And it tells us, so I'm gonna show you how to solve this first row here. It tells us the mass is 2.7 and G is just 9.8. So if we multiply that together, we get 26.5 Newtons. And then there's gonna be tension in this line. Actually, let me draw that a little longer. I'll just go up the full length so there's more room and we can see that angle better. There's tension up in this line and um, we don't know what that value is, but that's uh, the only, these are the only two forces at play. Now, because this force is at an angle, we can think about it having two components. And because there are only two vertical components and the object isn't rising or falling, it's staying at the same position. We know that this vertical component and this vertical component have to be the same. So this would have to be 26.5 Newtons as well. And then in this question, it tells us that this angle is eight degrees. So what we need to figure out is what is this X component of the force? because that would tell us the net force. Since these two cancel out, those aren't applying to the net force. It would just be the horizontal component of that tension that gives us the net force. So to find that X component, uh, we could say, I know this angle, I know the adjacent to that angle, and I need the opposite. So I'm gonna use tangent. So if I say tangent of 26.5 degrees, equals the opposite X that I'm trying to find times the adjacent, uh, sorry. Uh, eight degrees, sorry. Uh, X over the force of 26.5 Newtons. Then we can solve for X. And X is 3.72 Newtons. All right, so that is the force, but the question wants us to figure out what the acceleration is here. So we know it's a net force and the net force is just the mass times the acceleration. We know this net force, since the verticals cancel, it's the horizontal is the only one making a net force. So it would be 3.72 Newtons. And in this first row here, we're looking at a mass that's 2.7 kilograms. And then we just need to solve for A. So A ends up being 1.38 meters per second squared. So you're gonna follow through with the same process on each of the settings. You're just gonna change the angle, which is gonna change your net force. Um, and then some of them you're gonna change the mass, which will change this last step and determining of the weight force here. So just have to use that same logic though for each of the different rows in this problem to solve for that acceleration. So I hope that makes sense for that question. Uh, for the next question, it says a crane is lifting a system with a constant speed. The mass of each object is shown, neglect the mass of the cables. So we're just ignoring the mass of the cables themselves. They're negligible compared to everything else. How many forces are acting on the ring? So here's the ring. If we think about what forces are acting on it, it has weight. So there's gonna be the weight force there's this tension here, there's tension there, and there's tension there. So the ring has four different forces acting on it. All right, um, and then 
if we go to the next problem, um, how many forces are acting on the spreading bar, spreader bar? Well, on the spreader bar, it's going to have its own weight pulling down. And it's going to have this tension in the cable here, and this tension in the cable there, and this tension in the cable there, and this tension in the cable there. So while the ring had the three tensions plus its own weight for four, the spreader bar has its own weight plus four different tensions for a total of five. I'll let you figure out the load on your own with that same logic. Are the forces on the system balanced? Well, it says up here that it's moving at a constant speed, so there's no net force, therefore no acceleration. So yes, they are balanced. How much tension is in cable one? All right, so um, if we think about all the forces that are at play here. Cable one is bearing the weight of the ring and the weight of the spreader bar and the weight of the load. And it tells us the weight of the ring is 3K newtons or 3,000 newtons, the spreader bar is 19,000 newtons and the load is uh, 40,000 newtons. And so if we just add those up, cable one would have to bear the weight of all three of those things since the cables are negligible. So it's just 40 plus 19 plus three. So in tension one, we're gonna see, what is that? Uh, 5,962,000 Newtons. All right. Now in the second part of, pro part of the problem, it says how much tension is in cable two? So let's get rid of that because cable two doesn't have to carry the weight of the ring anymore. It only has to carry the weight of the spreader bar and the load. So it's not going to be 62 anymore. It's going to be 59, but um, not cable two and cable three split the weight and they split it at an angle. So um, if we think about the weight that's coming down straight at this point, so not, in not including the ring itself, but everything below that straight down would be 59 newtons. And cable two is going to take half of that and cable three is going to take half of that, but at an angle. So we also have to think about the trig here. So if I draw my triangle, I know that this is going to be half of 59. Uh, let's see. So half of 59 is uh, 29.5. So 29.5 would be the vertical component of what cable two has to support and the vertical component of what table, cable three has to support. And it's at a 40 degree angle. And we're trying to find this tension uh, in the cable itself, so the hypotenuse. And so I'm looking at opposite and hypotenuse, so that's sine. So sine of 40 degrees would be the opposite, which is 29.5 newtons divided by the hypotenuse, which is what we're looking for. So this the tension would be 29.5 divided by sine of 40, and that gives me 45.9. So cable two would be bearing 45.9 newtons, and cable three would be bearing 45.9 newtons as well. All right, so that's how you figure out this one and this one. I'll leave the last one to you. It should be a little bit easier because at this point, it's not bearing everything above. Cable four and cable five are only bearing the weight of this load. And there's no angle to deal with, so you don't have to worry about any trig, but they are sharing the load. So I'll let you see if you can figure that one out on your own. But hopefully that helps you uh, understand those two challenge problems from the positive physics assignment. Unit eight on angled forces. Hope that helps.